going to start on Trent, please, because obviously <laughs> when speaking about him being left out of the squad to face Germany, Gareth Southgate said we had Kieran, but at the moment I feel his all-round game is ahead of Trent's. Um, I just wonder, what are your thoughts on what's been said and, and what conversation have you had with Trent over the situation that he's facing, battling to get to a World Cup? And does he even need a, a, a pick-me-up at all? Does he need a lift at the moment? Do you really want to open this box? I mean it. No, actually, you're an English journalist and we can now discuss selections, um, whatever, until the World Cup starts. It's one of the reasons why you, why you, make, why you make massive stories of these kind of things, um, why the team cannot prepare properly. If you ask me for my honest opinion, we will create headlines. That's clear. You want that? Helps Germany, maybe I'm not sure, but it doesn't help England. It's, I don't know why we do that. It's a normal. It's a situation. That a manager, a manager picks a player or not, um, which I would decide obviously differently. But I'm not in in charge for, for this team, and that's why it is so. If you wanna, if you wanna discuss it, I'm. I have a lot of things to say, but I'm really not sure that it makes sense. I'm happy to discuss it as well. <laughs> yeah, and of course you are happy. <laughs> I mean, I, I find it surprising that he's... Is anybody else interested in the subject, or is it just Guy? <laughs> I, I, I find it interesting, only yes. because... King yes. Dom, Dom is not here. Yeah. Oh, you are here, sorry, I'm hiding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm? I find it interesting because, obviously, Trent has won just 17 caps since his de debut in 2018. And only one of those has come in the last year as well. And we all know the qualities that the Trent has. So I'm just wondering as well how it impacts him, because obviously desperate to go to the World Cup, he'd like to be a starting fullback for England as well, I'd imagine. So you've got a situation to manage a player here, but also I oh, it, does he need a pick me up? We are, we, are, we, we are fine here because it's completely different, because um, obviously I see him differently. That's clear, that's obvious. Um, there are stories out there that um, all the time people um, talk about him and, and say he, he's not a good defender. That's not true. He's a good defender. He doesn't defend always good. That's true as well. Um, that's what we are working on. He's a young player. He's 23. Um, and there's space for improvement, definitely. But I think really we only discuss it on, on the level we discuss it because his offensive impact is so extreme for us or it could be for each team in the world I would say so from my point of view it's easy it's an easy pick Where, whichever team I would coach in the moment I would sign him because he's exceptional is he, is he always exceptional? no <laughs> I remember met a player who is always exceptional so that's it now but the rest now it's now it's Gareth's job to find a team and England is obviously blessed with a lot of really, really talented players on, the, on, on a similar position, and it's, and it's difficult to line them all up together. And in this specific case, it could work because obviously Reese James can play in, in a three in the back. They did that for Chelsea pretty well. Um, would be probably interesting to see um, how how they could interchange positioning. We all see that when you play, it depends to how you play with three in the back. If you keep them deep. And it's um, a different story, but if you want to have them, um, want to be them, have them in, being involved in offensive situations, then Reese James, even as a centre back, could be uh, involved in that. All these kind of things, the tactical stuff, not too, not too interesting. Um, but again, it's it's Gareth's decision, and we made a decision. And again, the only thing I can really say, I would I would I see it differently, but that doesn't mean. It's right or wrong. I just see him every day, and um, um, and for Trent now, that's probably the most important. He came back. He's now not. He came not in and um, was in party mood, but he was not. He just accepts the he accepts the decision of the manager as well, um, because he understands football pretty well. He's an extremely smart boy, um, and did everything right. And as a player, you never can do more than offer what you can offer. And then in football, there's one guy who decides if that's enough or not, and that's the manager. And and here, more often than not, it is. It's uh, it's the case that he that he's picked, and for England, obviously not. Yeah, that's it. I understand. It's it's clear. He's, 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 for me, he's a world class player, and not playing then for the country is, is difficult. But it's only because there are other players who are pretty good as well, um, and play for for world class teams as well. So that's how it is. And um, 
Yeah. Actually, a rather nice problem to have, and better than having no right back. Germany had for a long time no right back. That's Philipp Lahm played it all the time, and we had this kind of discussion. But here we have four, and for sure there are some others out there, younger ones, already waiting. Um, that's it. And it's a difficult, it's a difficult one for a, for the manager of a, of, a, of a national team. I think some players don't play in their clubs, and but it's still important for for the national team these kind of things. But again, I would if you want them to play a good World Cup, then don't cook it too hot, I would say. So otherwise, you discuss this until November and um, forget, and don't, don't let them work properly. They Obviously, I think you could see a little bit that England is slightly under pressure because they don't play to their full quality in this moment. Um, but that's obviously possible at the, at the World Cup, so if you want to have that, Good stories with negative headlines. Work on it. If you want to be a bit more supportive, work on it. Let them do the job and criticize afterwards. So, how are you looking squad wise? Because obviously, we saw Kanate, Ramsey, Kelleher all train yesterday and they fit to play this weekend. How else are you looking fitness wise as well? We didn't see Nunez, Diaz, Jota, or Robertson training yesterday. Also, Naby and Curtis, what's the latest then? Okay, you have to help me a little bit. So some are still out doing rehab. That's Robbo, that's um, Curtis, that's Oxley, that's Nabi. If I'm on arms, yeah, they're definitely these four. Um, yeah, they came back from international. Um, how it always is, long flight. So Luis only landed yesterday morning. So um, I didn't see him yet. I heard he's good, but um, see him on, only later now. Um, Darwin, yeah, precaution after intense um, travel and, 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 and games. Same for Diogo. That's it, I think. Um, uh, Kelvin is not ready to play, but all over the moon that he can train now, it's fine, it's really good. Um, so he just needs now training, 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 and there will be a moment when he probably will play to 23 so that he can get a game because we play um, now all the time. Um, but that's fine. Um, Queef. I think will play this weekend U23 so that he can have a game. It's obviously not his season yet. He's quite injured for a long time. Um, but looks good in training, it's completely fine. Um, and Ibu needs training as well. So, yes, back um, for the weekend depends to training today. And uh, But um, he's back and that's good. You've had no Premier League game for almost a month now. You have had obviously two Champions League games in between that. I just wonder though, that lack of Premier League games, is it problematic or is it beneficial to you, especially when you take into account as well that Brighton haven't played at all in four weeks now? Up. Okay, that's a different, two different questions, obviously, two different subjects. Um, for us, um, I would have loved to play the games, the, the Premier League games, but it was not possible. Uh, and the, 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 the issue we have with that is just I have no clue where they put it in. <laughs> but that's not a problem for now. But we will see how we how we deal with that. Um, probably, yeah, next year. Um, don't like to have a game in hand or two games in hand. This kind of thing is not cool. Um, but it's a situation, so we cannot change that. So we don't think about it too much. Um, yeah, and from apart from that, the majority of my players played. So we didn't play, that's true, but they played, most of them. Um, the Brazilians not so much, but at least up a little bit. Um, so that's fine, that should be fine. But of course, we, from, from, we, for us we don't, we never are out there looking for excuses and this is for sure not a moment where we, where we think about that. We have to show consistency. The, the, thank God the last game we played against Ajax was a good game, we showed the right reaction, uh, we showed the right intensity, we, so we, we left, if you want, pretty much in a rather positive mood. Um, imagine we would have, our last game would have been Napoli. Wow, that would have been a great international break, uh, able to talk to the boys. So, but that's where we have to, that's where we have to go from, again, and immediately. Now we talk about Brighton, and that's a strange situation. Huh? So they, they they change the manager, and usually if you change the manager, then you can expect. I think at the first session together with the team of some visa problems of Monday or whatever. It's not a lot, but it's um, more than I had when I when, when I came here. So yeah, usually when you when a manager uh, when there's a manager change, then it's um, the the old manager got sacked. That means something didn't go well, but. Brighton did extremely well before. Um, 
And now they have a really exciting new manager. I have, Brighton is doing an incredible job. Um, uh, he, and he did an incredible job at Sassuolo and, and, and Schachter. Probably most of the people saw, remember the game against, against Madrid. Um, a really good game. And that's him. He's a really brave coach. He's um, very influential. I, I don't know how good his English is in the moment. That was a bit, could be a bit an issue. But apart from that, his football idea suits Brighton. Which is a football playing team, and but we don't know what we expect. Obviously, how much is old Brighton? How much is new Brighton? The only thing what we know is a really good team, and um, in a good, they were in a good moment before um, they couldn't play anymore. Because uh, by the way, I don't know why they, but their first game was cancelled. Uh, there was a train strike. Uh, oh. Of course, there was the Premier League cancellation. Oh, yeah, the Premier League cancellation. The second one, oh, okay, train strike. Okay, um, so that's the that's the situation. So we, we don't know, but it's for us, it's okay because in our situation we have to focus one hundred thousand percent on us. We have to be uh, really spot on. We have to be to show consistency. You have to defend on the absolute highest level, and that's what I liked about the Ajax game. Um, that we we were really in the game. We were really difficult to play Ajax in a super moment and I think in all the moments when we were maybe a yard or two too far away you could immediately see what they are able to do uh, and in the end uh, we, we, we played with a clear defensive approach like from um, like focus number one, two, three and four on that, uh, we played offensively a good game as well, didn't score but created a lot and that's pretty much what we have to try against a, sorry, a different opponent obviously but um, and after nearly three weeks or whatever but that's it now. Uh, we have this one session today together. <laughs> that's it. Um, and my job is now to to make it as clear somehow possible what we want to do. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, is he someone whose path you've ever crossed, Roberto? No, not yet. Just as far as him coming in is concerned, you mentioned about his language there. He was working with interpreters. Yeah, it yeah. works out like this. You he could, I'm pretty sure he cannot speak Russian and there's impact at Schacht, or Ukrainian, sorry, and his impact at... Uh, yeah, yeah that's obviously, well. yeah, exactly. So just as far as you're concerned, when you're dealing with multilingual players, you obviously spoke very good English when you came in through the doors anyway. Thank you. It's a lie, but thank you. better my German, that's a fact. If you measure it from that point, then yes, that was brilliant. How did you found it ever work? When you've had... Like now, we've had new players coming in who speak Portuguese or Spanish or not English. Yeah, I would prefer they all would speak my language, or even better, I would speak their language. That would be extremely cool. Um, yes, I would absolutely prefer it, but it's not possible. So in our case now, with, with Spanish, we have and Portuguese, we, Portuguese, we have um, plenty of um, dolmetchers, um, interpreters with my, my coaching stuff and players as well so whatever we do on a pitch it's either Fabio Cavallo who translates um, obviously um, Fabinho Bobby or Thiago uh, very often or the two um, Pep and Vito so that's fine I think there you lose not a lot um, when you translate but translating is a, is, a, is a difficult thing to do that you really you cannot get the emotion all these kind of things so I sometimes really feel for them I'm pretty animated and, and, and speak quickly in, in meetings and when they are longer and we had longer meetings before the Ajax game especially um, and you think they didn't get a word <laughs> for 45 minutes they only can read from my face and um, that's um, yeah not too comfortable, but that's why we, we are really behind it that the boys learn as quick as possible English. And in terms of when you drop in from one league into another league, does the fact that the Premier League is, is so global now, pretty much every single country in the world shows pretty much every single match that you could possibly, does that mean there's a better understanding maybe now for managers that come in so that it might not take them as long to get up to speed? How? I think you overestimate that a little bit. So, yes, it's a difficult league and stuff like that, but at the end, it's football. So, I should not forget that. And um, I think my colleague is rather adventurous. I, I don't think it's from Sassuolo going to, to Schachter Donetsk. He's now a mover. I think, yeah, uh, he's just happy to, to do what he's doing and wherever um, somebody asks him to do it. So, that's absolutely fine. But in the end, for all of us, it's um, kind of the holy grail uh, arriving in the Premier League. That, that's how it is. And it's for him, for sure, a big chance as well. But it's just I don't know him. I just saw his team. I just saw, yeah. But I, yeah. But we're all different. So yeah, some of us uh, 
struggle more with it, some less. So um, my biggest struggle when I arrived here was that I realized I, have, I thought I have to read all the emails I got over a day in a, in a language I, I, I wow, uh, that kept me really busy. Um, Meanwhile, my 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 what is that? How you call it? My mailbox is is my best friend, yeah, where you can put them and leave them. Um, and no, it's I, I don't know what what that exactly means for him. But he again, Sazuolo played incredible, really incredible. And then going to Donetsk, uh, where he, oh, I think he didn't speak the language, and but the way they played, you could see immediately. So he's a very uh, a manager who has impact. And that's why I mean, but we don't know how quick and stuff like this. But Brighton was good, it's really good. And um, so, do we prepare the set pieces they had before because they worked out, or do we prepare the set pieces they had at Shakhtar Donetsk? Yeah. We better ignore it completely and just defend as good as you can uh, the ball, uh, which is, that will be definitely there. Um, and that's the situation we're in. James? Yeah, you've got nine games in October, and you've got. Two games a week, I think, for the next six weeks. Thirteen games in six weeks. So, what effect do you think, and then perhaps that is down to the fact the World Cup is is where it is this year. So, what effect do you think will that that will have on the league season as a whole, on on, on the Premier League? What do you mean, the World Cup? Sorry, um, yeah. Well, ah, all good. What, what effect do you think having the World Cup in December will have on on the league season domestically? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know anymore. But it's of course it's. Let me say the problem is, if a tournament in the middle of the season, that's the problem with that is that we, the boys who come back from the World Cup, play a week later. Premier League. So usually you have a, you have a, the highlight is the World Cup, and then you can relax. Well, the boys is not too long, but at least three, two, three weeks, uh, and then you, you go again. This time, if you're on the final, you can relax two days, and then you start training and preparing the next the, the, the Aston Villa game. So that's of course, that's of course, impactful. Um, so it's a really long season for 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 everybody, for the, for the players involved in the World Cup, especially. Yeah, um, I think it's not no news. But I think it's a, a really it's not a good idea to do it like this. That's how it is, but <laughs> obviously, I thought that from the first day uh, it has no influence at all, and it's fine. Um, now we are in the situation, and now we, we don't think about it at all for a long time already. So it's just we have to, for us now, the next six weeks are obviously very important. But we, had, we didn't have the start we wanted to have um, for some explainable reasons, and for some reasons not explainable and we should not even try to explain it it was just not good enough in moments um, but that's now gone that's our basis and from here we go and now the job is to collect points bam start doing it now uh, very intense yes hopefully the boys come back so if they when you count through if they all come back and the others stay fit then we have a squad where we can deal with a lot of football games if we, if we don't have that then yeah, uh, then it's difficult uh, then you push through then the, the boys the available boys have to play too often. The others have to play too early, stuff like this. So, in a moment, but this only second, it looks like we, 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 it's, uh, the situation um, is better. Um, that we just can now, that they come back. The four players I mentioned now before are on the way back. Mid and October, I think they are, we sh would be then complete if nobody's out until then. Um, and that's obviously would be a good situation. But um, don't know about that now, but don't have to think about it. The only thing I have to think about is um, who's available for Brighton, make a lineup, agree on a plan, and go. Can I ask about Calvin Ramsey as well? In terms of you brought him in from Aberdeen, so what is it about him that you've seen that, that you'd like to add to your team? An outstanding talent. Great. So we scouted him as well. A lot of games of Calvin, um, and he did exceptionally well. Uh, for, for the young age and um, and the, the way he plays, uh, he, he's a real player. He's really involved in everything. So um, uh, it's a, re a real talent. I was really excited. About, I am excited about him. But then he arrived here and he had this issue with the back. And so since then, um, he was out. Now I saw him two, three times training. But it's the first three sessions. Now we know much more about him as a boy. Outstanding, well-educated, friendly, 
a really confident, a really, a really good boy. So now we start working. That's it. So, um, and how it is for all of them in that age group, the sky is the limit. So I have no idea where it can go for him, but um, the start in his career was really good. Now we had a little interruption, better now than next year, whatever. It's now done. We are through this, and now we have to make sure that we um, um, can work as much with him to give him just a good chance to, 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 to have the best possible career. Julius? No? Any more? You open? Jürgen, yeah, uh, a non-football question, if I may. I, I know, okay. <laughs> um, from the videos we've seen of you going viral in the past, you're quite partial to a sing song. Well, Liverpool is up for Eurovision, it's one of the two host cities. What? Up, uh, Liverpool, Liverpool. 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 Yeah, again, Liverpool is up for what? Up for Eurovision. The Eurovision song for the first time. Yeah. Liverpool um, <laughs> it's <been> <laughs> And I'm excited because we, we, we traditionally um, do really bad in uh, Germany, I mean. Yeah, I just wanted your thoughts on... We still watch it. You still watch it? Yeah, of course. What your thoughts on what it would mean for the city if we did get up this year? I have no idea. <laughs> no, I have no idea. I don't. I don't know exactly how this competition works. So I, because that's I, we, we watch it. It's, it's it's a bit perverse, pervert, whatever. To watch it, even when you know you get zero points from Austria, definitely, and these kind of things. So. Uh, I think it's pretty famous in Germany, um, watching it. Uh, at least, yeah. I mean, when I was at Dortmund, we always watched it in the team hotel the night before the game or stuff like that. We're <laughs> just disappointed about the result. But I don't know what it means for the city. If, it, if it, other people know that better, if it's good for the city, bring it, bring it here. It would be really great. All these fantastic singers, um, Abba and all these guys, when they're coming as well, would be great. Um, but um, no, I'm not especially for these kind of things. But um, Liverpool is a city where you can have a good party, so if the people are coming here and want to have a party, I think that uh, we can do that. When, when is it? Next year. Oh, next year. In a, but when is it? I, I don't, unfortunately don't know. I, you don't know. <laughs> yes, you're really well prepared. Yeah? <laughs> so is the, will the weather be good or will the weather be like today? So who cares? No, um, yes, it would be very important for the city if we could get that, if that helps, if I say that. Thank you. Welcome. Any more for the embargo? Yeah, you just wondered on Andy Robson, when do you think he might be back available to the Rams game? He's doing really well, but uh, that it, it looks really good. So he's not out for long, if, already too long out if you want, but now it was the international break, so that helped in this case a little bit. He's already out on the pitch running, good sign. I, I don't know if it will be next week or the week after, don't know. There's no more move on to the embargo section.